This week on TGC News, SIG revives the nightmare, a new type of AR magazine, and is the ATF backing down or biding their time? Let's get into it. Neomag offers so much more than a slick solution for discreetly carrying mags, with products like the RASC, which means revolver ammunition strip concealment, so folks that carry wheel guns don't have to have the bulk of a regular speed loader in their pocket. There's also the Sentry Strap, which allows you to cleanly stage your rifle sling using a slick magnetic solution. And now they've expanded the Neomag line. Not only do you have the single magnet originals, but now you have the dual magnet Type G made for Glock mags or holding other mags more securely. And you can still choose from black or silver, extended and standard size pocket clips. If you want to be the gray man, this is your brand. To get 10% off your entire order, use our code TGC2020 at theneomag.com. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. If you're new here, get subscribed to get new gun videos in your feed every single week. We'd love to have you back. Now, we have a ton of stuff to cover, so Izzy, fire it up. It's rapid fire time. First up this week is a new type of AR-15 mag specifically aimed at recreational shooters. It's called the Speed Mag, and it's from our friends at X-Tech Tactical. You may remember them from our video where we blew up over 650 pounds of binary explosives in the desert and got an amazing, just the coolest high-speed shot I've seen in a long time. It's the shot of the shockwave is just beautiful. This new magazine is a really straightforward concept. On the outside of the mag, you have a sort of collar thing, and you can pull that down to take pressure off of the spring and easily load rounds. This is a super common practice for rimfire pistols, and they've taken it to ARs. Now, I know there are a few of you guys sitting there going, this is dumb. I don't need that. And you probably don't, but... Based on what they said in the description of the product, this is aimed at more casual shooters and folks that have some sort of physical limitation for loading rounds. And if you ask me, anything that gets more people out shooting is a really good thing. Pricing on these lands at $24.95 each, and I'm really curious, I'm really curious to know what you guys are thinking about this one. Do you think it's a good idea, bad idea? I don't know. Let me know in the comment section. I want to hear your thoughts, and let's talk about it. Moving right along, Federal has released a new type of ammo called Hammer Down, and it's specifically designed to work in lever-action guns. It's going to be available in six different calibers, 357 Magnum, 327 Federal, 44 Mag, 45 Colt, 3030, and of course, 4570. The way they claim to make these work well in lever guns is through a chamfered case and a bullet that they claim has better terminal performance, although they don't mention what it's actually better than. I mean, any bullet is better than a cotton ball, right? They just say better. Okay. All of them use a bonded soft point using the same technology as the gold dots. The whole lineup was actually designed in collaboration with Henry Repeating Arms which is pretty rad. I love the guys at Henry. Prices range from $19.99 to $43.99 per box of 20. Next up this week, SIG has another new series of guns out from their custom shop. Well, sort of new. It's actually a rebirth of something they did on the 239 and 1911s a few years back. They're called the Nightmare Series, and it's available on the P220, 226, and 229. The long and short of this is that it's basically a new color scheme. The slides and frame are coated black, and all the small parts are nickel-plated. The guns come with a special case, engraving on the slide, and some night sights. And just like the last time I talked about SIG, they're still annoying and don't put pricing on their website, so I'm just going to guess and say that these will land 
around a grand for the MSRP. Rounding out our new product news this week is one that is just practical to its core, from my perspective. It's from a company called White Label Armory, and it's called the Home Builders Kit. Long story short, it's a complete set of AR-15 small parts that you could need for building or maintaining a bunch of different guns. To me, this is something you could buy and not need to replenish for, I don't know, like at least a couple days. <laughs> the kit includes things like pivot and takedown pins, all the detents, a bunch of springs, triggers, hammers, roll pins, extractors, cam pins, firing pins, gas rings, crush washers, and a whole bunch more. It would take forever for me to mention every little bit of it, and for a lot of them, basically all of them, there's multiples. There's like between four and 10, depending on the part. It also comes in a nicely labeled and laid out case. Part of the reason I'm enthusiastic about this is because I actually have their Master Armorers kit and one of their range kits, and I love it. So seeing something a little bit more affordable is a good thing. The price tag is 385 bucks, which isn't cheap. That kind of hits the ear. It's like, oh crap, that's a lot of money. But if you consider the fact that most lower part kits are like 50 bucks or more, depending, plus you don't get all of the extras that this has, there's definitely value. I definitely want to hear what you guys think of kits like this. I think this is interesting and I, I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Would you rather buy things individually as you need them or be prepared way ahead of time? I mean, you could build like many guns out of this. Sound off below and let's talk about it. How about some industry news? I know you guys enjoy it probably as much as I do. First up, Sig Sauer, yep, they're back, is expanding, which is pretty cool. They announced recently that they're acquiring a multi-building campus in the city of Rochester, New Hampshire, and that they will be relocating everything from their Dover, New Hampshire facility into this one. That will allow them to not only expand their operations, but also their workforce. The Dover facility has about 130 workers, and they say that this will bring 300 jobs to Rochester, so about 170 new jobs, assuming everybody moves, which is really cool to hear. I love seeing companies grow. We shall see how this sort of pans out for them and how it affects their business. And because we covered it and it's been hot news lately, we have an update on the ATF versus pistol braces situation stemming from Q. On October 9th, they received a letter from ATF's chief counsel stating that ATF was temporarily suspending the cease and desist letter that sort of caused this whole thing. According to this new letter, the suspension will remain in place for 60 days unless withdrawn or extended by ATF. The reason for this suspension is so that the DOJ has more time to see if the honey badger falls under NFA laws or not. <laughs> this also pushes the issue beyond the presidential election. I want to know what you guys are thinking here for sure, because this, this is an interesting situation. I'm betting the heads of the ATF want a Biden win so that they can go back to being sort of ignored extortionists. I'm betting they're plotting something. Vertex makes some of the best EDC bags and gear around. Whether you're looking for a backpack, a messenger bag, or maybe something for your pup. They've got features like a rapid access weapon compartment, padded backing, a hot pull tab for quick access to the main compartment, and much, much more. Oh, and did I mention their jeans make my legs look better? <laughs> Seriously, I can do so many high kicks in these. And guys, if you want to get a huge discount, head over to Vertex, that's V-E-R-T-X dot com, and use our code TGC to get a whopping 25% off everything. Go do it. It's time now for more Friendly Fire, the segment where I answer questions from you guys. Our questions this week are coming from the TGC Nation Facebook group. First up, Kirby Bowman says, will 375 H&H Magnum make a comeback? No, it won't. <laughs> the ammo is insanely priced, and for it to make a real comeback, more folks would have to want it, and gun companies would have to chamber guns for it. It's just not going to happen. Like, there's so much other stuff that people care about right now. John Hebert says, what gun or gear would you like to see modernized? Either the PPSH-41 or the FG-42. 
Yes, please. Those things are awesome. Tony Dunford says, why do you think there are so few options for larger caliber ARs like 300 Win Mag or 30-06? Well, it's simple. It's hard. The ammo is expensive. The ammo also has a boatload of variables that make it difficult to engineer a gun around, like bullet weight, powder charge, etc., bullet shape, what are we doing with the gun? On top of that, the R&D cost as a whole is absolutely massive. Only a select few have the balls to do it. Even then, the prices of the guns have to be higher to cover a lot of that. In today's market, where guns are selling like crazy, most companies won't divert from the path of filling orders to do that. Devin Guth says, why does the supply chain for ammo and components break down over and over again? It's like every two years we go through this. Well, Devin, uh, I'll try to explain. It's a matter of economics. It's not realistic for a company to bet on these huge spikes in sales. Betting on that is really risky. They have to invest a ton of resources, money, and time into building up inventory just to maybe hit the lottery and have one of these panic buying situations cover them. Remember, the Trump slump was a real thing. That wasn't that long ago. Brands were closing down all the time because the money just wasn't there. They had to liquidate all kinds of inventory and personnel just to try to survive. Manufacturers are more likely to play it safe and aim for the middle somewhere. They need safety and the ability to make a profit at the same time. It's a tough spot to be in sometimes. My friendly fire question to you guys this week. Who are your top three gun channels for reviews right now, specifically for reviews? This is going to be fun. Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want to ask a friendly fire question, jump over to Subscribestar and support us directly on there. We'd love to have you there. Now, I'm going to switch up the outro this week. It's going to be fun. After you guys click the like button, be sure to hit the secret affiliate link down in the description. That would be a massive help for us, US Law Shield 2. And of course, don't forget to get subscribed for more gun news every week. And as always, Thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. <laughs> yep, it's over, but don't worry. You can click on the video up top to watch last week's show, and the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.